Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. In the last episode, we went from Treasure Island to Loyalist Cove. In this episode, we're going to show you around Loyalist Cove Marina, and then we're going to go into the town of Bath. And after you walk around the town for a bit, you realize why it's called Loyalist Cove. There's British flags and British murals all over the place. And we'll finish off the episode by having an awesome sail downwind back to Treasure Island on the east side of Kingston. All that coming up in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. Okay, we've never been to Loyalist Cove Marina. We figure our appointment's tomorrow morning, so let's get the lay of the land today. You never know when you might want to change marinas down the road. We picked Treasure Island because we know a couple of people that are there, but that's sort of like picking your high school because your best friend's going there. Only to find out when you get there, it's such a big school and you have no classes together. Right away we notice the docks look a lot more stable, and they have their own travel lift. That's certainly convenient if you need boat work done. And this club's also known for having amazing service providers. Hmm starting to look better and better. Another thing that was a real selling feature for us was this awesome looking clubhouse. I mean, look at it, it's sweet. So we start walking around, trying to find out where the office door is. Nice seating area. Like our hotel, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah. Oh, cool. And uh, right about now, I think we clue in. New covered barbecue. Hopefully we're not in somebody's... Looks this could be an apartment. Balcony? Maybe this is an apartment balcony. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know, it's apartment number five. Maybe we should get the hell out of here. We just assumed the sweetest looking building at the marina was the clubhouse, but nope. It's actually just people's apartments, and we were just walking around in their space. Nobody seemed to notice that we were walking around in their personal space, but we got to check out this really sweet vintage truck. You don't get to see a truck in this good a condition in Canada with the harsh winters. Eventually found the office. Far less swanky. This looks like the real office building. The sign in the window kind of gives it away. And that's the clubhouse we all wish we had. So clearly those are apartments, but somebody needs to fire the superintendent because that pool is nasty. Well, it was time to leave the marina and go check out the town of Bath, which is supposedly where this marina is, but we had to walk through this subdivision to get to the main road. These are some swanky houses. The name like Edgewater Estates. Very nice. We later found out that the owner of the marina is actually the guy that started this subdivision. That's why it says Loyalist Cove Marina at the bottom. We were sort of wondering where all these wealthy homeowners actually work because this town is like, wow, tiny. All we could see when we got to the road were two gas stations. One brand new looking one with a coffee shop and a little store, great. And the other one looks like it was made in 1970 and it had the name Free Flow, which I'd never even heard. I was the second gas station has nothing on this first fancy gas station with Max, but then we get here and CBO and beer store! It's important. So now we know why anyone would stop at the more rundown gas station. It's the only place in town to get booze. Nice. We were starting to think we weren't actually in the town of Bath until we saw this sign that said Bath. So we were there, I guess. So far, not really much to look at, and certainly nowhere for all those rich people in those houses to work. We walked down the hill and found this little park. Quite cute, except for it was flooded. We all know Janice is a bit of an adrenaline junkie, a bit of a risk taker not concerned for her safety at all. And here she is again, living on the edge, standing on a bridge that clearly has pylons on either side. Look at that raging current underneath the bridge. It could just tear it from the mounts at any moment. It's scary. Continuing our walk through Bath, we sort of felt like we'd been brought to colonial Britain. Murals like this all over the place. British flags hanging from every second house. You think I'm kidding, but no I'm not. Here's the golf course, called Loyalist. Guess you gotta swear your allegiance to the queen to play around here. And then there's this house that didn't want to upset anybody by having a flag from every country on his porch. And here's Janice tearing off ahead without me, just dying to find somewhere to go shopping. No such luck, sweetie. This is far from the hub of commercial activity. Now we didn't find any good shopping, but we did find three separate places selling ice cream. And we do love our ice cream. First there's this place that sells a little bit of everything. And then there's this place that's sort of an entrance into the side of a house. And nobody was there, so we just kept walking. We noticed this a lot at these stores. Nobody was in them. There was always a sign saying, come in, we are open. And I totally get the need for the sign because if that sign wasn't there, it would look like they were closed. Janice, we were just saying how there really isn't much... Like a like no restaurant. I was expecting to see like patio restaurants everywhere because it's such yeah. a cute town. But... It is a cute town, but there's no, wasn't any obvious sit-down restaurant. So this but, is cute. We can sit there. Ice cream nice. shops we found two. 
and a couple of like little markets to buy food, but there's no sit-down restaurants really. That thing is, but there's nobody in the parking lot, so I wonder why not. There's no patio, we should absolutely yeah. have a patio. And there's no like easy places, like there's no subway or anything quick. Yeah. So. Anyways, so we're walking back to the boat now. I think we've seen everything there is to see in Bath. So this is the place Janice was talking about where it is a restaurant, but you know, it was in the parking lot. So it says all day breakfast, so we were dying for breakfast maybe. You usually judge a restaurant by how many people are in it. We're going to check out the Max finally on the way back. I figure it's the biggest and closest convenience store. See what we got. So Craig wanted to check out this Max still. We don't need anything. They have a sign saying buy one get one free Klondike cones. So that's what we're going to get. That's a winner. Another winner chicken dinner. Yes. So after the walk we had to treat ourselves. So this is what we're getting. It's windy as hell again. So I'm sure by the boat it's cooler. But in here in town when you get away from the water it's actually kind of warm. So we are back at Loyalist Cove Marina, and it is still windy as hell. Now you really feel it when you're on the water. I'm going to pan around. Okay, we're back at Loyalist Cove. We decided to walk the breakwater. Boy, is it windy out it's here. It's a lot cooler out here than in town. Yeah, trying to put the jacket back on. And look at the waves. At that time, the middle actually comes right over the breakwater at points. So this is their breakwater to stop the waves from coming into their marina. But it's so low, it doesn't really stop the wind from coming in the marina. So these boats get blasted. Coming over the sides at me. Hello. A lot cooler out here in this yeah. wind, isn't it? Jacket weather out yeah. here, tank top weather in there. We were just talking to a nice couple over here on this road over here. Suzanne and Randall. Suzanne was the one that grabbed her line while she first saw coming in this crazy wind. They were telling us that these, this uh, breakwater, this gravel breakwater, they just put this in this year because of this incredibly high water. The water was over top of the previous breakwater, so they brought in a bunch of gravel and had it packed. Thank goodness he did. Waves like this would be coming right over into the harbor and smashing the boats. We're at Loyalist Cove Marina for our appointment for the estimate. And Dixon is so, giving things a look over. So here's the real reason we came to Loyalist Cove. It's for service work. And they're giving us a quote for the insurance company to fix the lifelines and the pulpit. We're just discussing whether it's easier for them to just buy the parts from Beneteau. And that's pretty much what we've decided. Unfortunately, they have no idea what that's going to cost, so it takes a while to get a quote like that. While Dixon and I are talking about service work, Janice went off to film ducks. Much cuter than us, for sure. And I'll leave that footage running while I talk about service work. One thing they said they could fix while we were there at Loyalist Cove is our windlass, which is uh, the thing that pulls up your anchor. If you don't have that working, you have to manually pull up your anchor, and we have a 35-pound CQR plus all chain. It's quite a lot of load for me to lift. Janice can't do it. And when you have no lifelines on your starboard side and no pulpit to lean on, picture trying to pull up that anchor and all that chain on a lurching boat that's bouncing up and down with nothing to lean against. It's very unsettling. So even though it meant having to stay in Loyalist Cove for an extra day, we really wanted to get that windlass working again, so we decided to stick around. Now, we originally thought it was the solenoid that wasn't working, and that would be a simple fix. We thought maybe we'd stick around for a couple hours the next day and then get on our way, but... It ended up being way more complicated than that. See here, after they've replaced the solenoid, the motor still wasn't working completely right. It would work intermittently. Wow. What did you change? <laughs> Was it something easy that would have so taken five So you're just going to have to sit up here in the bow and hold your finger on this button until you want to lose it. Oh. No, it doesn't work. What did you tap okay. the first so time? So it just connects the actual motor. It ended up that it was our brushes of our motor that needed to be repaired. So we had to take the motor into Kingston about 35 minutes away and have that fixed there and then brought back to the boat and reinstalled by the service providers here at Loyalist Cove. Like anyone who owns a boat would know, it always takes way longer to do boat repairs than you ever expect. But this was something important to us. We really needed it to work. We said we could stick around for another day, but we couldn't stick around for another two considering Janice had to get back to work. So they were frantically trying to get this windlass to work for us before the end of day. All this extra attention to our boat was having onlookers come and see what was going on. It was a testament to the excellent work by the service providers at Loyalist Cove. We'd like to thank Dave in particular. And they got it fixed. Okay, so we, have a, we have a windlass that works again. Yay! It took a day and a half to fix it, but we're very happy. Very happy. All right. Okay, we just left Loyalist Cove Marina. I almost forgot the name being there what a day and a half well the work got done anyway and yes, we're on our way back fabulous, sir. yeah they are good which it's 5 24 so we were trying to get out by 5 we got out around 5 15 so that's good so we got four hours around 
of motor sailing to get back down river to uh, Treasure Island before it gets dark. Fingers crossed. The weather looks a little iffy. But yes, it was a good time at Blows Cove. We already met some cool people there yeah, that very we'll be keeping in touch with. Including the staff that works there. Yeah, so. they're all fabulous. And yeah. It was a very nice experience. So hopefully um, it looks like we'll just be dropping our boat off at, at the end of the season for them to fix it over the winter. Yeah, why waste it's sailing season? It's convenient for everybody, I think. Yeah. Less pressure on them and they can uh, work on it in the winter. For us also. They suppose they have a heated working uh, storage yeah. area to work on boats, so that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a boat that looks a little war-torn for the summer, but it sails. So it's that's operational. All. Yeah. All right. And we got a windlass that works now. Woo. Woo. All right. That's it for now. Yep. Talk to you later. And with that, we're on a four-hour sailing trip back to our home port. Well, actually, it had to be motor sailing. There just wasn't enough wind to push us at the speed we needed to get back before dark. So what do you do when you got a motor sail to feel more peaceful like you're really sailing? You go sit at the bow of the boat. See up there, all you hear is the wind in the sails and the water lapping against the hull. You don't hear the engine. So we took turns being up at the front. Back home to Treasure Island, which is just over there somewhere. Alrighty. Weekend over. Join us next time. If you enjoyed the episode, click like. Uh, yeah. And what else should they do? Subscribe. Subscribe. Woohoo! Bye. Bye. Janice and I just got back from two weeks vacation where we sailed around. We crisscrossed Lake Ontario and go into a bunch of American cities and a bunch of other things happen, one where we almost lose our boat. So subscribe so you don't miss an episode. A very special thanks to the patrons that support the channel. It's because of them that I'm able to make these episodes. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please go to patreon.com slash cruisingoffduty. Until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. <laughs>